Hey everybody. In the last video I did, I showed you how easy it is to work with Cloudflare workers. I showed you how to scaffold a new worker. I showed you how to set up a local dev environment. Uh, you saw me iterate code that used the Pirate Weather API. And then I showed how to push that in production. Uh, if you don't remember, this is what the, work, the worker looked like. Really short. And this is an example of the result on the right. So this works pretty well. Uh, it does take about a second or so, in this case, 1.5 seconds. What I want to show you today is how I can add simple caching to this worker. Now, Cloudflare workers support a couple of different persistent systems. One of the simplest one is their workers KV. It's a key value system where you set a key and set a value when you store it. It's highly performant. Uh, the docs talk about how it's architected and it talks about how to work with it in your worker. Uh, so I will share those links in the video description, but let's actually do this for this particular worker. Uh, I want to add a cache uh, that will store the result so that I don't have to hit the API every time I hit my particular worker. So we will stop the dev like that. And we will use the Wrangler CLI to create a new KV system. And it's as simple as Wrangler KV namespace, create, and then a name. Now we'll call it weather2, the same as my worker. And then bam. Now it does tell me to add this to my configuration file. I haven't showed you that. It is a TOML file. And we can copy and paste some code like that, where I have an array of KV systems because I could have more than one persistence. Uh, I will give it a name and an ID, and I will just copy and paste that from the terminal, save it, and let's run our, rank, our um, worker again. It's going to work perfectly, right? Oh, no, it didn't. However, it gave me a really great error where it basically says, hey, in development, you really need to use a separate KV namespace. And by the way, here is how you do it. You basically add dash dash preview. So we will do that. I will run the same command again, but adding dash dash preview. And voila, I can literally just come in here and add that new value, save it. And now it is going to work perfectly. All right, cool. So now it's time to actually update my worker. All right, so we'll go in here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a new function that will handle the Pirate Weather API. Uh, it's a pretty short set of code, but I would like to have it separated so that my main worker code gets a bit simpler. So I have a new function here, get forecast, um, that handles that logic. And then what I want to do is ask the cache, ask the KV system, if I have already worked or gotten the data. So let's clear this out. I'm not going to need this. And I'll show you the API. It's literally that simple. Uh, my binding for my KV system will be under the ENV argument, which is passed to my worker. Uh, it's going to have the same name as what I named it. And I can ask for a particular key. This will be null if it doesn't exist. So then our logic to kind of handle that <clears throat> will be an if statement. Now, in here, I want to basically use my logic again that I had before. So I've added a console message just so I know it's not getting from the cache. I'm going to call my new function. And I'm passing my key, my lat, and long. I am reshaping it as I did before because all I care about is the daily weather and the alerts. I'm also adding a new key right there for created just so I can kind of see that it's working. And then lastly, I want to switch the result to be forecast. Now, if everything worked right, uh, it won't be cached. It'll be checking the cache, but I screw up all the time. So let me just make sure I didn't screw up here. And voila, we could see I got the console message. 
Uh, I got that little created variable. So now I need to actually store the value in cache. I'm going to show you the first version, and then I'll show you the better version. So all I need to do is use the put command. It's async as well. One thing that's special about the KV system is that it can't handle complex data like a JavaScript object. It's a lot like the browser's local storage. But luckily, I can just use JSON stringify. I've done that there. Now, because it's going to be stringified, if I do have my forecast from the cache, I do need to parse it. Now, this is not complete because this will cache forever, essentially. Normally, here's where I go and I write logic, okay? If it's cache, check that created value, see how old it is. However, the Cloudflare folks actually made it so that when you store something, you could automatically expire it. You have two ways of doing that. You could specify a specific time or a time in seconds, which I've done here. Now, I, I would never cache a forecast for only 60 seconds. I would definitely cache for a couple hours minimum. But I want to show this in a video and testing. So again, I'll save it. Hopefully, I didn't screw anything up. We'll reload. And it should come back in 1.2 seconds like it has before. And I'll reload again. And notice now it's <laughs> quite a bit faster by a factor of like 99%. Now, I told it to cache for 60 seconds. This is the part where I need to kind of stall and kind of make stuff up. Uh, I would show you like my cat, uh, but I kicked her out because she tried to knock over some of my toys and I just can't have that. So let's see how we're doing here. Still in cache perfectly. All right, so I'm looking at my little video recorder timer here. Let's wait about 10 more seconds. If you fast forward the YouTube video, I understand. All right, I'm gonna wait four more seconds and that should be it. Let's reload. Nope, okay, I was too quick. Uh, let's wait five more seconds. Still in cash. Come on, baby, you have to expire. Uh, let's see now. There we go, cool. So you can see the console message. Uh, it wasn't a cache now. I ran it. It's been put back in cache. If I reload again, bam, that fast. So really, I did a couple things at the command line. I added to my configuration file, and the code is just a couple more lines. It's really, really, really simple. So I hope this made sense. Um, and obviously, I could push to production if I wanted to. Um, I will share links to the docs. And let me know if you have any questions.